Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Bollinger with Orbital Insight. Great way to kick off the conference here, first thing in the morning, uh, breakfast. So uh, I lead our defense work. Um, to give you a little background on Orbital Insight, we're a four-year-old private Silicon Valley geospatial analytics company. Uh, we started work actually in the private sector, Wall Street, um, and then came into the DIX portfolio. The whole thesis is taking recent advances in space launch technology, cloud computing, hardware with GPUs, and applying geospatial analysis to data at scale. So we can take in all sorts of different geospatial analytic uh, data sets, starting with commercial satellite imagery, both EO and synthetic aperture radar, but we're also using other structured geospatial data sets as well. You can see one of the first what we're doing predominantly for the defense sector is taking computer vision and applying it to these geospatial products so that you can generate trend analysis, um, automate change detection, and then tip and queue from lower revisit rate, uh, or sorry, lower cost, higher revisit rate geospatial data products into higher, um, more costly, higher resolution geospatial data products. Our platform allows you to define what your AO, AOIs are, pick which trained algorithms you'd like to deploy against, whatever that geospatial data is for multiple providers, um, and then see whatever the, the object detections are, and then define your, it will present the trend analysis, allow you to set automated user-defined alerts and notifications so that, that it's helping the analysts know where to look and when, because they can't look all everywhere all of the time, right? Optimize the analysts. Um, bandwidth. One of the use cases here is we started with maritime port monitoring, so 80% of the world's economy flows through maritime ports on ships. So being able to look at ships, oil storage, containers, import-export lots, commodity piles, and being able to track what the trends of those integrated global supply chains are. Again, knowing, knowing where to look and when. Another, another example here is maritime domain awareness, so taking AIS data as well as electro-optical and synthetic aperture radar and being able to see where the ships are in relatively re real time, right, because you have the overhead detections integrated with the AIS detections and you can also automate which ships are operating without um, their transponders or AIS. Land use classification, so we're taking anything from 30 meters, 30 meter Landsat imagery down to 30, 3 meter planet imagery and automating classification of land use, you know, um, forests, um, um, buildings, roads, that helps with our um, foundation management and feature extraction, which you just saw there, so being able to provide point clouds of roads and buildings at up to global scale if required. We've also done a lot of disaster relief work and using synthetic aperture radar to automate the flood extent analysis, so this is your scene, um, Hurricane Harvey in Texas. And we also, working with the World Bank, are automating demographic analysis. So this is a heat map of poverty rates across the entire country of Mexico, again, using just geospatial electro-optical data from multiple commercial satellite providers. Um, so again, we'll be here today. If you're interested in, in automating geospatial analytics and how to integrate that into these defense workflows in terms of trend analysis, change detection, and tipping and queuing, um, me and my team will be here today. Thanks.